In this video, I'd like to share and explain some important details if you intend to design 3D printed mechanical objects. This 3D printed machine vise is a good and simple example for it. I'll also do a bit of material science and test the mechanical strength of 3D printed structures. First, some thoughts about the 3D printing process. You probably know that a common 3D printer stacks layers of molten plastic. The adhesion between individual layers is crucial. For a well-maintained 3D printer, this shouldn't be a problem. But if things can go wrong, they go wrong. Just open the window and the changing ambient temperature will cause different shrinkage or expansion of the printer frame. The same happens if you expose the printer to direct sunlight and causes differently printed layers. Sometimes a small piece of dust can get stuck in the nozzle and cause a temporary clogging. I've placed my printer into, in a dark cellar together with some bottles of wine. But sometimes there are bad layers which you hardly even notice. Perfect layer adhesion would be great, but in reality we have to deal with this as a fact. Let's look at the forces inside a 3D printed bar which was printed horizontally. If there is a longitudinal pushing force, the forces inside the bar are aligned with the 3D printed layers. Even if there is a bad layer, the overall strength of the bar is not much affected. The situation isn't much different if the force is pulling. The majority of the 3D printed traces are holding the bar together like reinforcing fibers. When printed vertically, the situation changes. While a longitudinal pushing force is still sustainable, a pulling force will be catastrophic. It is like the weakest link of a chain. The whole object is only as strong as the weakest layer. That's a relevant difference compared with the horizontal printing orientation, where each well-printed layer increases the total strength. The horizontal layering is also much better if the force is applied laterally. The internal forces are aligned with the layers, either pulling or pushing. A lateral force applied on a vertically printed bar is a big risk, because the internal forces try to rip the layers apart. Hence, the behavior of a 3D printed bar is similar to a wooden bar. In order to test the theory, I've printed a bunch of bars 100 mm long and 10 by 10 mm cross section. They're all printed with PLA in different orientations on my MakerBot and I was disturbing some prints by putting a weight onto the build platform, causing a few bad layers. Using a scale, a C-clamp and some wooden levers, I've applied an increasing lateral force until the bar broke. The first bar was printed horizontally and it even had a bad layer. The scale displayed approximately 39 kg when this bar broke. The second bar was printed vertically, it snapped at 23 kilograms. The third bar in this test is a piece of spruce wood. With a load limit around 37 kg, it is similarly strong as PLA. And then I destroyed 13 more bars. If you look at the broken pieces, you can see that the well-printed bars did break exactly in the middle, while the other badly printed bars did break at the location of the bad layer. Like toilet paper. The difference between horizontal and vertical printing orientation is significant. Even on a perfectly printed bar, the vertical orientation is 13% less strong than the horizontal orientation. The worst situation is the vertical orientation with some bad layers. It is only half as strong. With this knowledge, we are now prepared to start the vise design. A vise requires a strong screw. If the screw is printed horizontally, there is support material needed at the bottom, which will lead to a very rough surface. In addition, the outer edge of the helix will be a problem, because the printing nozzle can't print very sharp corners. 
This screw will behave very uneven. It's much better to print a screw vertically. I've managed to print a regular screw with 60 degree overhang. However, this orientation allows only pushing forces and not pulling. A bench vise is therefore a bad idea. When a workpiece is clamped, there will be pulling forces on the screw. The situation is much better with a machine vise. The screw is executing pushing forces, so the print orientation can be vertical. The moving jaw won't be a problem either. But the green U-shaped base is exposed to pulling forces, so we need to pay attention in our design. If the U-shaped base is printed upright, it won't be very strong because of the unfortunate layering. If the U is tilted to the right, the situation with the layers and forces isn't much better. Only if the U is laid flat on the build plate, all the internal forces are aligned with the printed path. Hence, this is the orientation where our Ys will be strong. The whole design is done in Fusion 360. The base with the fixed jaw is colored orange, the sliding jaw and the screws are yellow, handle and gears are red. I've divided the base with the fixed jaw into two halves. The sliding jaw is guided between these two pieces. Sliding jaw and screws are one solid piece. The gears are threaded and push the sliding jaw away from the counterpiece of the fixed jaw. The red jaw plates are replaceable. The design with the two screws at the corners instead of a single screw in the center has some more advantages which I will explain later. The sliding jaw is printed on my Ultimaker. Screws have a diameter of 12 mm. The two halves of the base are printed overnight on the replicator. And the remaining pieces including their threaded gears are printed on the Ultimaker. After all printing was finished, the rails of the base required some sanding in order to smoothly guide the sliding jaw. The threads were all ok, but when cleaning the surface with a tap, they are even better. Assembly starts with the two threaded gears. They need to be positioned at the end of the screws, exactly with the same orientation. For this reason, I've added a small hole as indicator into the gears, both indicators need to point into the same direction. As next, one screw and the sliding jaw needs to be properly placed into the base. The end of the screw points towards a guiding hole in the base, but does not yet stick into it. You must not yet mount the jaw plates, because the sliding jaw would be too long for assembling. Now the handle with the center gear is placed between the two gears. That's the last moment to check if the two gears are still well aligned. Later the two gears will remain aligned because of the common center gear. Then it's time to position the second half of the base. Both halves together build the bearing for the handle and the sliding jaw can only move along the rails. The sliding jaw can now be retracted and the screws will enter into the guiding holes of the base. Without entering into those holes, the screw could wiggle up or down and the gears would easily miss out some teeth. In order to firmly connect the two halves of the base, there are six clips which fit into the small rectangular holes. These clips are also kind of U-shaped. The expected forces pushing the base halves apart are very little. However, the clips are designed and printed perfectly aligned for these forces. After all six clips are inserted, it's a good idea to check on the opposite side of the base if these clips are all well snapped in. I do this with a small screwdriver. Finally, the jaw plates are assembled. This works quite easy for the sliding jaw. The fixed jaw plate has a tighter fit and maybe it would have been a better idea to mount it before assembling all those clips. Anyway, both plates firmly snap into their designated position. The machine vise is now finished and ready to use. 
You maybe have noticed that all pieces are 3D printed and there is no metal screw needed. The benefit of having two screws at the corners is obvious. If there is only one center screw and the workpiece is clamped on one side, the sliding jaw is tilted and potentially jams and breaks the rails. With two screws, the sliding jaw is moving always well aligned and can't jam. The two halves and the two screws are kind of two vices working in parallel. I'm using this vice quite often in my workshop. The upper groove of the jaw plates has exactly the size for clamping a PCB and do some soldering work. The V grooves in the center are very useful to hold a piece of wood at a proper angle. It very much helps for drilling perfect holes with the drill press. Of course, you can't expect that this vise is strong enough for heavy duty metal machining. Anyway, the replaceable jaw plates are ideal to be customized. If I ever have a workpiece with some odd shape, I'm going to design and print a custom plate. Let me conclude. Not all designs are useful for 3D printing, but if the properties of the 3D printed objects are considered during the design, it is possible to create objects which actually perform very well in reality. 3D printing is not only useful for prototyping, but also for final products. And by the way, the STL files of this device are all downloadable from Thingiverse. You can find the link in the video description.